I'd like to call this Saline City Council meeting to order. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for, uh, for being with us this evening. Um, Tonight we have, uh, or present, we have myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Burgoyne, Gearbaugh, Saibo, Rhodes, Roth, and Tahar. From city staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, uh, City Superintendent in Engineer Rubel, and Parks and Rec Director Scruggs, and I believe Police Chief Rennick also walked in. Um, our um, uh, district Judge uh, Cedric Simpson is running a little bit behind because of inclement weather, so we are going to delay the swearing in of Council Members Tahar, Roth, and Saibo until he arrives. Um, and in addition to that, there are a number of changes to the agenda this evening. Um, the first of which will appear on the consent agenda, and it relates to item C-14-016. Um, the confirmation of my appointments to boards and commissions. Um, a couple changes that occurred Friday afternoon. Um, Mary Niels Frumkin will not be on the Celtic Festival Board and she will be replaced by Jim Peters. So again, Jim Peters will take the seventh spot, uh, or the sixth spot, excuse me, on the Celtic Festival Board. And then late Friday afternoon, we learned that Eric Harris will not be accepting reappointment to the Parks Commission. So there will be one vacancy on the Parks Commission. Additionally, on new business item 14-11, application for community event, the fifth corner 5K run, um, after the second point where it reads this, that Celine Main Street will provide a liability insurance waiver, it's actually the fifth corner Celine Teen Center will provide the liability insurance waiver. So again, that's a new business item 14-11. We are subtracting Celine Main Street and inserting um, Fifth Corner Celine Teen Center. Okay. Are there any other changes to the agenda this evening? If not, I would seek a motion to approve the agenda then as, um, actually I have one, excuse me. In the memorandum, um, related to the establishment of two new task forces. There is an omission. Um, I don't have that document in front of me. Do you have that, Terry? Thank you. On the first page, uh, under Celine Community Addiction Prevention Task Force, I am able to confirm that Terry Saibo will be our council liaison and representative. So on the first page where it states membership will be as followed, um, you'll notice that it says council representative not yet confirmed. You can insert Terry Saibo's name in there as she will be the permanent council representative. Sorry for that omission. Now, if there's nothing further as it relates to uh, the agenda, I would seek a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So so moved. moved by Mr. Gearbaugh, seconded by council member Rose. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. There are no absences this evening, so we will dispense with that. And we move on now to my annual State of the City Address. Good evening, City Council, City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens. I'm honored to be before you this evening. Let me begin tonight by taking a moment to express gratitude to those who retired from city government in the last year. Too often it is only those in leadership who receive recognition, but as everyone here knows, it is our staff who complete 90% of what needs to be done to make our city government work, and we are all indebted for their contributions. As you know, and as I've said many times, Saline is a very special place. But like communities across our state and in our region, in recent years our city has experienced some major hardships and challenges. However, in the past year, I believe that strong, bold steps have been taken to pr improve our strategic position, excuse me, and Celine is stronger and better off than we were just 12 short months ago. This city council continues to be forward-thinking, and members understand the value of having a vision for the future. 
We've already had two retreats and are in the process of finalizing our goals and objectives for the next fiscal year. I'm proud of what we've come up with together, but it's important to note that once our goal document is completed, there is still much to be done. Our goals cannot be realized through government alone. We need the engagement of individuals from all areas of our community if we are to move forward effectively. Truly prosperous and successful cities provide exceptional public safety. And Celine continues to reaffirm the importance of police, fire, and emergency services. We are fortunate to have an outstanding police department whose talented professionals work tirelessly to protect our citizens. The Celine Area Fire Department is a great example of collaborative efforts at their best. Our department provides fire services for the city combined with Lodi, Celine, and York Townships. And I'm honored to serve as the board chair as the department is beginning a 10-year plan to improve employee compensation while also planning for the future in responsible ways. One area our community needs to work on is the growing problem of substance abuse and addiction. Tonight, I'm asking council to authorize the creation of a new task force charged with ensuring better cohesion among the various entities working against substance abuse in our community. Those struggling with addiction should get the help they need and deserve because every life has great purpose and great value. Although addiction is certainly not unique to Celine, we cannot simply accept it as inevitable. We must be proactive and tireless in working to help those struggling and those at risk. You know, so often in my role as mayor, I'm approached by entrepreneurs and developers who are interested in opening a new business within our city or relocating to Celine. This is an exciting time for our community and in a very real way, Celine is open for business. In response, city government has become more strategic in the way we work with businesses. This year, we had a round table and summit with many of Celine's larger businesses. In addition, for the first time in city history, we held a similar event tailored to the needs of smaller businesses. The Small Business Forum was warmly received, and we will continue to hold those in the future. The city recently created the business ambassador's position, and Kathy Korfman has done an excellent job so far, serving as the point person for those in our business communities, community excuse me, with questions or problems that city government can assist with. We continue to aggressively market all city-owned vacant properties by employing a professional commercial realtor. Getting those properties in use and on the tax rolls will help our community in countless ways. Another task force that council will consider tonight would be charged with reviewing codes and ordinances that are no longer relevant or necessary. The goal here is to ensure that city government can work more effectively without onerous or overly restrictive policies. All rel residents will have an opportunity to weigh in, and I'm counting on our business community to be vocal so that changes make sense. At my urging, our Economic Development Board's commissioned a subcommittee consisting of board members, city staff, and business leaders to update development plans for our industrial park, as well as improve Celine's promotional materials for prospective business owners. The group is also looking at a number of strat strategic ways, excuse me, to support small or new businesses in our city. One exciting possibility is the installation of free Wi-Fi available in certain portions of the city. It is something we've only just started discussing, but certainly something that could help Celine's businesses to thrive. In order to be effective, City government must think creatively and adapt. A, community, a community's infrastructure today might include Wi-Fi, where 15 years ago the term didn't even exist. This past year, the city completed two successful infrastructure projects, one in the heart of our industrial park on Woodland Drive, the other on Saline River Drive. Feedback from our residents has been very positive. This year, I look forward to coming to a consensus with my council colleagues and other interested parties about the best ways to move forward to fund infrastructure projects in the future. Existing resources will soon be depleted, and we must find sustainable ways to invest in our infrastructure. As I've said in the past, I'm proud that Celine's current budget is balanced and invests in areas our citizens value most. In a small but profound way, it is beginning to grow our fund balance. With a nominal mill increase, our budget is based on real data, doesn't seek to delay the inevitable or rely on faulty numbers or baseless conjecture. In this upcoming budget, we will continue to scrutinize every area for cost savings and improved efficiencies. 
and I am confident that we will be able to identify at least a few areas for improvement without reducing services for our citizens. During the last year, the city significantly changed the way we conduct labor negotiations. More than ever before, council was involved and engaged in providing direction and strategic advice to our new labor council. And I am so proud to say that our labor council and staff did an excellent job. These are the best contracts in decades, representing true compromise and cooperation. And thank you so much to our employees for stepping up to the plate and understanding that sacrifices needed to be made to improve the city's financial health. This past year, the city uh, resurrected the Rec Center Sustainability Task Force, which made a series of recommendations to council that were unanimously approved. These changes seek to boost membership so that our Rec Center can become more self-sustaining and thrive without large general fund contributions. The Rec Center is now offering reduced memberships to anyone residing in the school district not just the city or Pittsfield Township, as well as expanded hours, all-inclusive memberships that include most classes and new payment plans. This time of the year, most everyone makes goals to be healthier and fit, and I encourage everyone to check out our rec center. There are some great things happening there. Another exciting development is that Selene is beginning work to add a new park using existing city property, which will include walking trails and celebrate our community's history. A personal goal of mine is to restart the popular Rec on the Go program. Until it was discontinued a few years ago for funding reasons, the program was a collaborative effort of multiple local organizations, allowing kids to participate in recreation, arts, and reading activities during the summer months. It was a fantastic program for kids, especially those whose families may have limited options during the summer months, and it is a rare example of a program with nominal costs but having a huge benefit. And I am asking each of you to work with me to reestablish Rec on the Go. In our efforts to remain open and accessible, city government continues to utilize technology to engage with residents. We continue to find ways to improve our website and we encourage people to sign up for the Celine Scene weekly email updates. We also recently launched the free C Click Fix app to help residents more easily report information to city government. And I am meeting later this week with a company interested in helping city government engage and connect with res residents in new and better ways. We must continue to find ways to encourage community members to participate in their government and to stay engaged. To that end, we are doing our best to offer opportunities to new and different people to serve on our boards and commissions, as well as special task forces. If someone is willing to give of their time and talent we should do everything possible to make sure they get involved. This year, the city held two town hall meetings on tax issues, and we produced an informational brochure about recent budgetary changes. And that brochure is still available at City Hall. And I've had a public dinner and discussion event and two public coffee hours, and I look forward to continuing both. During this last year, my friends, many issues and problems have been addressed, although certainly not all. There is still much to be done but city leaders understand the importance of prioritizing and the value of articulating clear, succinct visions for our future. I truly believe that government, in particular, in particular local government, has the ability to do good things in people's lives. We provide a number of services that enhance the quality of life for our residents. But our community's greatness is not defined by government. It's defined by our people and their willingness to be involved in our ecumenical communities, in business, in nonprofit or in service organizations. To that end, I encourage all of my fellow citizens to continue to be engaged, even in small ways, to make our community a better place. Now, none of this progress would have been made possible without the hard work and talents of my council colleagues, Mayor Pro Tem Linda Tahar, Council Members Lee Burgoyne, Dean Gearbaugh, David Rhodes, and Jim Roth. And we welcome back City Council Member Terry Seibel, and I know that she will lend a new and enriching perspective to our process. I also want to take a moment to thank outgoing council member Jim Peters for his hard work and his dedication. I am eager to continue working with city council, city staff, and all residents to move Celine forward. Understanding the character and conviction of our people and the determination of city government, I still believe that Celine's best days are ahead of us. Thank you. May God bless you, and God bless Celine.
I believe uh, Ms. Bondi has joined us. So, Jean, if you'd like to come forward. You want to say something? You just wanted me to talk. <laughs> well, I'll start. Um, Gene Bondi is retiring after a number of years, uh, a number of exceptional years of service to the Saline Police Department, specifically as a dispatch officer. And uh, we're going to be having a little party for her, I think, in a week or so. Um, and I welcome all of you to, to join us. But uh, this evening, I have a, a letter of recognition that, that I'd like to read. Um, and it's pretty brief. Whereas Jean Bondi has dedicated her life, um, her life work, excuse me, to a career in public service working more than 20 years for the city of Saline. And whereas Jean graduated from Saline High School and the University of Michigan with career paths that included teaching for Ann Arbor Public Schools, medical research, for, medical research, excuse me, for the VA hospital and University of Michigan, a realtor's license and, at a local real estate firm, and finally, public service for the Saline Police Department. And whereas Jean Bondi has dedicated, has decided, excuse me, to retire and spend more time with her family, which includes Jean's daughter Susan and her husband and two children, and Jean's son Chris and his wife, and also Jean's father, 98-year-old Joseph Bondi, who still resides close to her in the Saline community. Now, therefore, I, Brian Marl, mayor of the city of Saline, on behalf of the Saline City Council and citizens of Saline do hereby thank Jean Bondi for her dedicated service to the city of Saline and the Saline Police Department with sincere best wishes for a long and enjoyable retirement. Congratulations, Jean. So we're going to miss Jean. I, I have to say this on a, on a personal note. Jean's folks and, uh, and my grandparents were friends. In fact, they were neighbors on, on Russell Street when it was called... Uh, Celine Heights, and um, if my memory serves me correctly, Jean was sort of the resident babysitter in chief on <laughs> Russell um, during, well, I'm not going to say the years, uh, and uh, you know, I apologize, I know you didn't get a lot of business out of my grandparents because they never went anywhere, um, but uh, that, you know, her, her willingness to, uh, uh, to, to do that um, is indicative of Jean's desire, her lifetime desire to help others and to serve others. Um, and, um, you know, based on her employment history, you can tell, uh, you can see rather, that, that she's very committed to doing what's in the best interests of others and putting others' interests ahead of hers. Uh, so we will miss Jean, but again, she um, provided more than two decades of extraordinary service to the city and to the police department specifically, um, and she will be missed. So let's give her one more round of applause. Thank you, Jean. Do you want to say anything? to stay in Celine, and uh, I am honored to have had the opportunity to serve my community. I really have enjoyed being part of Celine Police Department. Thank you. Thanks, Jean. Okay, up next we have a water and sewer rates study from our friends at uh, Tetra Tech. We have both uh, Vic and Brian here. So gentlemen, if you'd like to come forward. And Mr. Rubel, excuse me. And just to note that council members, you should have a, um, a hard copy of their um, PowerPoint in your packet. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, just before Vic starts the presentation, <clears throat> I have just a, a, a brief uh, synopsis of uh, and uh, start up here. Um, the uh, Water and Sewer Rate Committee was uh, made up of, of course, uh, the two members of Tetra Tech here, Brian Rubel and Vic Cooperwasser. Uh, city staff on the Water and Sewer Committee were our Todd Campbell, Bob Skull, um, Jeff Fordyce, Mickey Joe Bennett, Joanne McDonough, the Deputy Treasurer, and myself. Um, <clears throat> The uh, major uh, accomplishments during the past two months uh, were the gathering of water and sewer data and information, uh, mainly from the years uh, 2012 and 2013, which seemed to be representative years for, for uh, flow and things of that nature. 
Um, <clears throat> and then we, of course, were able to review the capital improvement plan worksheets and, and budgets. Um, going through that uh, process, we were able to adjust the capital improvement plan, the current draft budget, uh, project plan, and then also uh, uh, make that match the water and sewer needs as far as equipment uh, improvements and uh, needs and operations over the next five-year period. Uh, some of that came from the project plan that was completed last year. Um, then uh, <clears throat> we considered uh, development of the computer model, the rate study model, and uh, the scenarios that we would look at, and then we chose the best scenario that would uh, exemplify uh, the characteristics of our utilities, the community needs, uh, uh, the capital improvement needs, and uh, the you know, overall performance needs uh, for our system. And uh, <clears throat> then lastly, you'll see on the last slide, uh, we do uh, have to bring the measure back uh, on the next council meeting. We are required to have a draft or a resolution adopted per our S2 grant requirements only for the first year of proposed new water and sewer rates. Um, we would have to do this anyway because if you look at our code book, uh, the current rates expire June uh, 1. So we, we do have to adopt new rates anyway. At least now we have new rates based upon a, a very good study, a very good basis, and a, a lot of effort put forth to, to that endeavor. Thank you. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. You have in your packet the PowerPoint presentation uh, presenting the results of the rate study, the rate calculations. And I'm just going to go over this uh, presentation uh, to summarize the results. In terms of agenda, uh, covering uh, the value of water, what the rate design considerations were, financial goals, assumptions, the equipment replacement fund capital reserve targets, current and proposed rates, what the typical total residential quarterly bill from 2014 to 2017 might look like, and then next steps. Uh, to put the value of water in perspective, uh, it's a very simple table comparing a gallon of various uh, drinks, and you can see the, the tremendous value of uh, the, the uh, cost of saline drinking water at the tap is uh, about six-tenths of a cent per gallon compared to all these other uh, items that we uh, use all the time. So rate design considerations. Uh, some of the fundamentals are we want to recover all of our operation and maintenance costs, uh, set aside a dedicated amount for equipment replacement, cover our capital improvement plan costs, debt service costs. Next key item is the Bolt Opinion. The Bolt Opinion is a uh, 1998 Michigan Supreme Court opinion that uh, provides guidance as to what a defendable user charge is, or a user fee is, and water and sewer rates are user fees. So they, that opinion gives guidance in terms of uh, how user fees should be uh, calculated in broad terms, in terms of being fair and equitable. Bond covenant compliance, the equipment replacement fund requirements, the cash reserves. And then um, another thing we looked at is um, uh, projected billable flows. Uh, if, if there's a possibility that there might be a uh, uh, reduction in billable flows, we want to take that into account because if there's a reduction in billable flows, uh, uh, then that impacts the rate. The lower the billable flow, the higher the unit cost. In terms of water and sewer rate financial goals, the revenue from rates recovers the net expenses. And we, we have three rates. Uh, that recover these expenses. There's a fixed billing charge, which is the same amount per billing period, whether you're billed monthly or quarterly. There's a fixed readiness to serve charge, and that readiness to serve charge increases with the size of the, your water meter. 
but it's a fixed charge. And then there's a consumption charge. So whether or not a user uses any water at all, they could have a zero consumption charge, but there would still be a billing charge and a readiness to serve charge, and those two charges comprise the fixed charge. And so you can think of it in terms of having that water sewer system available 24-7 to all users of the city. Then the consumption charge is a charge per thousand gallons, which uh, you use more water, you, you pay more. Uh, we want to contribute to the equipment replacement funds. And the other thing to uh, take into account in terms of looking at rates is that any uh, annual adjustment uh, for the typical residential customer, uh, you know, one of our goals is to make any adjustment be reasonable. And by that, what I mean is um, sometimes communities will go for years without reviewing their rates and not, not change them, not adjust them. And then after many years, realize they have to have a major uh, rate adjustment. And so rather than go through an experience like that to kind of review rates uh, more frequently and, and have a reasonable adjustment to recover costs. There were some, uh, we had you know, several meetings with the uh, rate study committee and uh, looking at input from city staff. Uh, we looked at the current Michigan Department of Environmental Quality requirements for the equipment replacement fund contributions. And, and those uh, requirements are based on uh, pay, uh, having obtained a drinking water revolving fund and a wastewater revolving fund loan. So the state has some minimum, minimal requirements in that regard. And the amounts can be less than or greater than those currently mandated by the city's uh, ordinance. So we reviewed what those amounts uh, should reasonably be. We also considered that uh, there's a possibility that the largest industrial user uh, might uh, be uh, uh, reducing their uh, their sewer billable flow by as much as 60%, uh, and the impact on that would be uh, approximately an $80,000 revenue reduction. We don't know if that is going to happen, but if it did, we thought it would be prudent to factor that into the rate model. We also used for the billable flow, the average billable flow for uh, fiscal years 2012 and 2013, that gives a slightly conservative billable flow. <coughs> Uh, rather than say just using the last year's billable flow. We also had an assumption of 0% growth in, in this model for the next few years. And by the way, all of these assumptions, uh, the rate model allows adjustments on a year-by-year -year basis. So for example, if uh, the assumption of 0% growth is no longer applicable, then you can just dial that in, there's a spot for that to adjust the billable flow. And, and that's that last bullet, uh, that all of these assumptions are subject to annual revision. The rate model is designed to uh, adjust the results based on annual review and revisions. So as far as the equipment replacement capital reserve targets, um, the annual contributions to the equipment replacement funds meet the current MDEQ requirements in the rate study. However, for the, the, the sewer portion, we uh, recommended a larger contribution than the minimum. And that's because uh, the city is considering um, constructing uh, improvements to the wastewater plant using an SRF alone. And in that case, the DEQ uh, requirements for the equipment replacement fund based on that investment could rise to over $200,000. So in anticipation of that, we are recommending a, a larger set aside of uh, 140,000 in the sewer equipment replacement fund. For water, it's uh, 70,141 as an annual contribution. We recommend that you know, sewer rates to be reviewed annually for FY 2016 to 18 uh, to uh, focus on that uh, SRF requirement should the city proceed with those projects. The proposed rates compared to the current rates are shown in this table. There are six 
charges, three on the water side and three on the sewer side. These charges are the billing charge, the readiness to serve charge, the consumption charge. So the current rates that went into effect June 1, 2013 are shown in, in the second column, and the proposed rates are shown in the last column on the right. You'll see that some rates go, go up, some go down, and that's simply as a result of the calculations of uh, allocation of the, the various budget line items to, reco to recovery by the proper rate. And the reason we do this is to be a, in better compliance with the Bolt opinion so that the goal is that the revenue from the sewer rates recovers the cost to manage the sewer system. The revenue from the water rates recovers the cost to manage the water system. And that's the intent, the reason why we go th through this analysis. And with this result, in terms of projections for the typical residential uh, customer, that is to say a customer uh, with a five-eighths inch, three-quarter inch uh, meter size, which is the base meter, and uses 18,000 gallons a year, that person's current quarterly bill is uh, $189.59. So based on the projected rates that would go into effect June 1, that bill would go up by 4.9% to 198.80. Rates were also projected for 2015, 2016, 2017. And one of the items we, we noted on there was for 2016 and 2017, should the city proceed with the SRF loan project, um, the equipment replacement fund contribution for sewer would need to be increased above the 140,000 for 2016-2017. So next steps uh, would be to pass a resolution for at least one year's rate adjustment, and that's to be considered at the next Monday's council meeting, and to send the user charge system to the DEQ for approval by the end of the month uh, to meet the uh, S2 grant requirement to get that user charge system submitted to the DEQ. So that completes the summary of the results and I'm willing to take any questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Cooper Wasser uh, or for uh, Brian Rubel or for our city engineer? Mr. Rhodes. Um, Vic, will you just explain for our, our listeners what SRF stands for? Yeah, SRF stands for State Revolving Fund and what that is is a low interest loan program where uh, the city can uh, apply for a loan, a current interest rate I think is 2.5% or 2%? 2%. And uh, that it's, it's a, a state program that's been around for a while. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, just regarding the water rates, is, since they're going to be going down slightly for this coming year, um, what was put into the formulation for in terms of replacement of the water treatment facilities or the, t or the um, water towers or any of that? Did we account for that and how, how is that in comparison to the um, sewer replacement, I guess? Right. Um, the, con the equipment replacement fund for water uh, was 70141 um, and, and for sewer it worked out to be uh, less than 140,000. I, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but we're recommending 140,000. And these equipment replacement funds are intended to um, provide uh, funds in reserve for items that have typically a 20 year life or less and uh, would cover those expenses so that wouldn't have to come out of rates. Um, so uh, those, those, the, they cover those projects. So, you know, a project can be funded either through the equipment replacement fund or through um, the bond issue or directly through rates as a capital outlay. So, depending on the nature of the project, um, it, that it, it gets funded by one of those three sources. So, we did, uh, based on city input staff, we 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 look, reviewed this CIP and factored that into the rate calculation. The other thing I would point out is that the, the recommended rates are just for this year and effective June 1, and what we recommend is then going forward, 
you know, next year, review that capital improvement plan and see if the assumptions are still valid because what happens is we have assumptions today for what we think we're going to need three years from today, or we're going to do this project three years from today or four years from today, and then a year from now, you sit down around the table again and realize, well, we need to do it sooner, or we can postpone it, or something else has come up. So it's, it, another way of putting it, it's our best guess for what's going to be needed in the next five years. Right, and I just wanted to make sure what assumptions were made because our water treatment facility plant for softening and everything is approaching 12 years, so if you were talking about a 20-year replacement, that's coming up. Right. In, in the details of the spreadsheet, we have um, dozens of line items for things like filters, for pumps. They're all itemized in terms of when they were installed, what we think the remaining life is, and when we think what year they're probably going to need to be replaced. And that's in the spreadsheets. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Burgoyne. Um, June 2016 shows a 7.2% jump. In, in the uh, multi-year rates. So what was it that in 2016 came up? Um, I think there's a, um, a major project on um, the QS-12 uh, that uh, impacts that uh, the, uh, capital improvement that's projected at that time that impacts that, I, just going from memory. Please. If I might. <clears throat> um, it's the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the streetscape is, is um, scheduled hopefully for 2018. Um, <clears throat> so in those years planning, part of that would be utility replacement uh, in, along 12, some very old water mains. And so that's, that's the cost that's rolled in. Additional questions, Mr. Burgoyne? No? Any other questions for staff or for our guests from Tetra Tech? No? Vic, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Brian, appreciate your time. And as was previously indicated, this will come back at uh, our next council meeting, which is a week from today, for action. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, now we get, uh, we're going to revert back to a previous item on the agenda, the swearing in of council members Tahar, Roth, and Seibel. This time I'd like to uh, invite District du Judge Simpson forward. Your Honor, we appreciate you being here this evening. Not problem. Weather's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to, uh, I'll, I'll basically turn it over to you, my friend, if you want to um, call them up at... Uh, in whatever order you see fit. And of course, we do have some family members and friends who may wish to join the uh, council members during their swearing in. All right, whatever order you'd like. All right, well, I have here, why don't we start with Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. <laughs> Councilmember Roth, do you want to step forward, please?
last but certainly not least, Councilmember Seibel. Uh, That is all. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you to the guests who, uh, who attended this evening as well. We appreciate that. Okay, we move on now to uh, citizen comments on agenda items. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Gretchen Driscoll. I am a state representative for this district, and I live at 320 North Ann Arbor Street here in Saline. I'd like to say Happy New Year to the new council. and. Look forward to a new year of working with you. And um, I just want to commend Mayor Morrow for the task force on addiction. addiction sorry, I've got a little cold here. And I um, uh, wanted to offer my support as your state representative. I've been following um, the tragedies that have been occurring in Saline and, and actually other communities around the state. And the issue specifically with heroin is very devastating to small towns. And I just want to make sure that you knew, all of you knew that I would be available my staff and any um, state services that we can provide for you. So I think it's a great um, task force. I think it's a great idea to move, move forward with that. And I know there's a very complicated issue. So I'd like to commend you on the leadership on that. And also just to let you know, I don't think it really applies here in Saline, but um, we have been working with Connect Michigan, developing a um, broad, more capacity to develop more broadband around the district and I've also reached out to the rest of the county through the CEO meetings that they have monthly um, to provide services for broadband last mile internet to underserved areas so if that is something that you feel that that might be something that be, might be of interest I know you discussed Wi-Fi a little bit in your state of the city address I might be happy to talk to you further you know later when I know you're trying to have your meeting and this is really more of a ceremonial meeting but Again, um, look forward to working with you in 2014. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Appreciate your time this evening. Are there any additional citizen comments on agenda items? No? Then we move on to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Move to approve. It's been moved by Rhodes to approve. Actually, it would be as amended, Mr. Rhodes, if that's okay. As amended. Um, been moved by Councilmember Rhodes to approve as amended. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Roth. Any discussion? Mr. Burgoyne. Uh, ha have we filled in the numbers? I, I know that we got it, but uh, the uh, payment of bills, the number of pennies and the numbers. Oh, no, we do need to do that. That's an R faux pas, excuse me. I do. Thank you for catching that, Mr. Burgoyne. The, the grand total is $611,232.33. 
111, you, say that again? I think it says 111. Oh, to, oh, yeah, excuse me. Yep, 111 payees, excuse me. So that um, it would be the third item under consent agenda, um, C dash bills, the approvement or the to approve the payment of bills, excuse me, consisting of 111 payees in the amount of $611,232.33. Excuse me. Thank you for catching that, Mr. Burgoyne. So it's been properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Roth to approve as amended. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. We move on to old business, item 13-194. This is Celine Rec Center rule changes, or, or excuse me, Celine Rec Center rules and policies. This will be a motion to acknowledge the memo dated November 26, 2013 from Parks and Recreation Director Scruggs and to approve or not to approve the Rec Center rules and policies as submitted. Is there a motion? Move to acknowledge and to approve. A Mo second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar to acknowledge and approve and seconded by Council Member Seibel. Ms. Scruggs. Thank you. Uh, since the last time that uh, this was brought before the, the Council, um, we did have our City um, Attorney review the, all of the uh, recommendations and, and policies and changes. And uh, he has uh, cleaned it up a little bit, put in uh, some just kind of general language that he thought would be appropriate in order to um, to enforce certain rules and regulations. And um, essentially, as I said before, um, you know, we're just kind of cleaning the language up, trying to simplify it, making it very clear, um, readable, and um, just made all of the changes uh, that City Council approved regarding um, fees and hours and, and so on and so forth. So really, this has been reviewed and approved by our city attorney, and it's just coming to you be, uh, for approval. Very good. Are there any questions for Director Scruggs? No, thank you very much. Oh, excuse me, Ms. Tahar. Just a comment, thank, thanks for all the hard work. Revising text is, is kind of, can be drudgery, so um, I think it came out well, and I appreciate all the hard work that went into it. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Scruggs. Any additional comments or questions? No? Thank you. Appreciate your time. Any additional comments related to this motion? No, that's been properly moved by Tahar, seconded by Saibo, to acknowledge and to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 14-08. This is the appointment of Mayor Pro Tem for 2014. This will be a motion to appoint Council Member Linda Tahar to serve as Mayor Pro Tem for the year 2014. Motion to appoint. Thank you. Okay. It's been moved by Burgoyne to appoint. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Roth. Any discussion? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. And Ms. Tahar, thank you for your willingness to serve as Mayor Pro Tem again for 2014. I, I know you'll do an outstanding job. Thank you. Thank you. We move on now to new business item 14-13. This is task force appointments. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the January 3rd, 2014 memo from Mayor Marl and to, con and to confirm Mayor Marl's appointments to the Saline Community Addiction Task Force and the Saline Code and Ordinance Task Force as outlined in the memorandum. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Mr. Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Tahar. Any discussion? Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, I just hope that the um, code enforcement group will be able to um, hold meetings that will involve a lot of public input because I know that's probably a concern that um, even though it is a task force that we have opening and discussion going out for the public because I think that's really one of our things to move our government forward is to have that input. So however we schedule those meetings, I hope they'll be available at times when people are available out in the public. Absolutely. Um, and let me echo the, the statement that was just made by Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, actually, um, assuming that uh, the um, task force is approved this evening, I suspect that sometime in the next week, um, city staff and myself will most likely meet with um, former council member, former mayor, and now chairman of the task force, um, Pat Little, um, to discuss some nuts and bolts and logistics. Uh, but one of the things that we do want to guarantee is that there's plenty of opportunity, not only for our private citizens, but also for those members of our business community to provide feedback and be part of the dialogue and discussion. Um, and actually it extends beyond private citizens and business uh, owners or business professionals. It'll also include staff, um, not just our department heads, but also frontline folks, because they have a lot of 
institutional knowledge of what works, what doesn't, and what needs to be reviewed and analyzed and critiqued. So I, I certainly agree and I, I echo those sentiments. I, I want to make one brief comment uh, as it relates to the Saline Community Addiction Prevention Task Force, and I, I appreciate the remarks that were uh, recently articulated by Representative Driscoll. Um, substance abuse and addiction is a problem in this community. Um, our community is not unique or immune to these kinds of problems, um, and heroin in particular is becoming a, a, a growing problem and challenge. Uh, and I'm very excited that a, a diverse array of people have um, decided and have been willing to step up to the plate and help combat this problem. Um, I do want to note the uh, memorandum outlines that there will be nine official members of the task force, but that certainly doesn't mean that other individuals um, and stakeholders in this community cannot play a role and a part um, in, in helping that group to be successful. Um, so if you are interested in, in assisting that group in any way, I hope that you'll reach out to either myself, another member of council, or Smita Nagpal or Chief Rennick, who will be serving as the co-chairs uh, of that entity. Um, it is a very, very important initiative. It's something to be taken seriously. Um, and one of the reasons why we have co-chairs and one of the reasons why the membership is so diverse is because we want it to be a community effort, not just a City of Saline effort. Any additional comments related to this motion? No, then I would seek, uh, well, actually we have, uh, it's been properly moved, excuse me, and seconded by, it's been moved by Gearboss, seconded by Tahar to acknowledge receipt and to confirm. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. We move on now to new business item 14-09. This is the resolution from the Washtenaw Health Initiative. This will be a motion to adopt or not to adopt the resolution authorizing the City Council to become a, to become a Washtenaw Health Initiative Charter member and contribute $500 for 2014. Is there a motion? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Seibel. I, I apologize, colleagues, that I wasn't here um, for the last meeting where um, Carrie Rigans and, and I believe some of her colleagues presented uh, on this important initiative. It's something that I've worked on for several months. Um, and let me just say for your benefit and for those in the audience and for those that may be listening at home or will be um, listening to this meeting at home, this initiative is unique um, in the state of Michigan. In fact, it's the only initiative that exists countywide. Um, and what the... Um, the uh, initiative is, um, is sanctioned to, to do is basically to assist people in finding health insurance. Um, this is, let me make this very, very clear. This is not an endorsement of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, as it's more commonly known. This is just, this, this entity was created with the understanding that this is the law of the land, whether we like it or not. And one of the major components of the statute is that every American get health insurance. So this entity consists of municipal units of government, not-for-profits, and U of M Health System and St. Joe Mercy Health System. And it's charged with making sure people know about what options and resources are available to them and helping to coordinate efforts to make sure that everybody gets health insurance. Um, I think as you learned uh, a couple weeks ago when they presented um, so far, Ypsilanti, the City of Ann Arbor, and Washtenaw County are charter members, and it's their goal to, to have every municipality in Washtenaw County be a charter member. So I'm very enthusiastic about this. Um, if it's approved, uh, well, the one thing that came to mind uh, earlier this afternoon is, Mr. Rhodes, we would probably want to put uh, this initiative and the contact information, which I can get to you, on our spreadsheet for the... Um, um, the resident support services. Resident support services task force. Yeah, that, that that document that they produce because this is a resource that we want our citizens to take advantage of if they have a need. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? No. All right. Then it's been properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Cybo to adopt. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 14-10, the Saline Wastewater Treatment Plant Improvement Contractors application for payment number two. This will be a motion to acknowledge the memo from City Engineer, or City Superintendent Engineer Rubel, and to approve or not approve payment number two for the wastewater treatment plant improvements in the amount of $113,985.90 as submitted. Motion to approve. Been moved by Burgoyne to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Rhodes. Mr. Rubel, do you care to make a statement? Uh, just a, a brief comment. Um, normally, uh, progress payments on contracts uh, don't come to Council until uh, basically the end of the project or when there's a change. And uh, 
the, at the end of the contract, if there's no changes, we just do a balancing change order and we final it out. Uh, in this case, though, it's, it's in the interest of the city and public and the council in general that uh, we give informational updates and uh, communication on the status of the project and, and how things are going. And so with this, uh, we have the opportunity with uh, uh, this second request for pay uh, to show you the status of the financial uh, aspect of the <clears throat> project and the progress that's been made to date by the contractor who's, who's moving along quite well. Still, we will complete the project well ahead of the 12-month uh, estimate, maybe perhaps March, maybe perhaps April, although it may be set back by this current weather problem. <laughs> so uh, um, Mr. Mr. Rubles here, in case you had a question uh, for him of any detail of any sort on, uh, on the technology aspect. Um, and I also have, have attached some photo pages of, of uh, the uh, digester cleaning effort and the uh, problem solution aspect of the considerations there. Uh, in fact, I, I did retrieve a sample of the delaminated uh, uh, membrane and coating from inside of the tank, in case you wanted to take a closer look at it. Um, although the contents of the sludge storage tank are somewhat undesirable, <laughs> the, the sample has been thoroughly disinfected, of course, okay. and will be put in our put in the engineering, uh, you know, sample collection uh, show and tell section. Um, <clears throat> noting it's uh, noting the fact that it's um, not uh, not going to contaminate us. Right. Um, I, sure. I would welcome you to uh, provide it to Mr. Roth, and once he's had an opportunity to review it, he can pass it down, and everyone at the dais can have an opportunity to review it. Thank you, Mr. Rubin. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the good news on that aspect is that if, even though uh, a large portion of the the old coating, uh, you know, delaminated from age, uh, after study they found out that the concrete. Uh, is actually not affected by the action of the digestive process and the digester, and that no new coating is, is required. So we, we're going to save uh, a sizable amount of money on the allowance for that in the contract. So there, there may be some savings reported at the end of the contract uh, due to uh, that consideration. So uh, with, with that said, uh, if you didn't have any questions, I would ask that you would prove um, the second pay request, and then uh, we'll have the contractor continue on with uh, his work. Are there any questions for Mr. Rubel? Ms. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tar. Um, um, this may be for um, the other, or the Mr. other Mr. Rubel. Rubel. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just had a question about the, the last page in our packet, which is the products, project status communication um, dated December 27th. Um, under impediments, roadblocks, assistance needed. Um, you know, the contractor is being very conservative with his interpretation of the contract documents, and this is leading to more engineering time to enforce contract review and proposal change order requests. So I understand all of the, those words, but what does that mean <laughs> um, in terms of the project moving forward, in terms of future budget? of the project considerations were I, I don't think it's anything to be terribly concerned about. Uh, the contractor, in summary, um, is interpreting the documents that he bid on and contracted with uh, to his advantage at, at every opportunity. <laughs> and we, we are working on your behalf very diligently to uh, ensure that the contract is executed fairly. Uh, it does require more of our time when we, we work with a contractor who behaves in that manner. But uh, thus far, we've, we're accommodating it quite well in our budget, and it's not getting the project off schedule. So thus far, it's, it's not a big deal. I think, I think it's going to work out fine in the end. If I may? Please, more? absolutely. Yes. So um, do you have any concerns about the quality of the work that's being done as a result of this conservative approach? I, I, I do not. There have been a few things that have come up along the way uh, that we've, we've asked the contractor to redo because they were not according to the specification. Uh, but I, I believe we've caught all that and corrected it as we've gone. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Anything else, I, Mr. Hart? No, thank no? you. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, Mr. Rubel, please. I could add that we have a very good project inspector out there uh, from Tetra Tech, Tim Ard, and uh, when something occurs on site, 
that he feels uh, uh, is not followed in detail by the contractor, he will call me, he will visit the office, and he'll follow, with, follow up with emails to staff as, as, as well as the, the Tetra Tech office, and he will Im immediately put the contractor on notice take, and take the appropriate corrective action on it. So we're, we're very satisfied with Tim Ard's uh, representation on the site, and it's, it's, it's paid off. Mr. Gearbaugh? Just because we've had concerns with contractors in the past, I just want to make sure that our legal team is involved whenever we need them involved so that we don't have mm -hmm. another problem project. Um, the only other question I had, and this is not really for Mr. Rule, but maybe for uh, just in documentating, it indicated in the one memo on December 13th about they were unable to locate roof design data um, because of putting a chiller unit or whatever, chilling unit. Um, just because of all our other buildings and such, I'm just concerned that we want to make sure that all our documentation is in place for whatever constructions and designs for all of our city buildings in the event of any future. So maybe an inventory on that needs to occur. I'm not sure what this all meant, but this sounds like the stuff from the late 80s is missing. Well, the, um, was built. the old engineering company, of course, was Ayers Lewis Norris and May for many early projects. They sort of were taken over by another one or two engineering firms in the past 10 years. And when we called their office to retrieve whatever plans they had, they no longer, you know, they had already disposed of them years ago because of their, of their age. And we weren't able to find them um, in our files either. Uh, at that time, Ayers Lewis Norris May kept a majority of the records on file and, and didn't provide the city copies. So that's part of the, uh, we found that out <coughs> later that, that that was the situation. Yeah, I would just and, like to move forward with the policy that right. we do maintain our own. And, right. If I might. Please, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to add to that, <clears throat> one of the things that we've done is, is um, we've worked fairly diligently with Tetra Tech and other um, contractors that we use, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, oftentimes in the terms and conditions on a project, it'll say, um, ownership with to stay with the um, consultant and I've always been I've learned many many years ago that, that at least my position is we've paid a lot of money for these things we want ownership so that this type of thing doesn't happen so the last few years we've done just that and, and Tetra Tech again has been very flexible with us and and um, I don't know I think um, probably not just unique to Celine, but but um, it is slightly different from their boilerplate terms and conditions um, because we it says client retains ownership, so we have those documents. Great, thank you. Good question, Mr. Gearbaum. Any additional questions for staff or for uh, Mr. Rubel from Tetra Tech? No? Any additional discussion regarding this motion? Okay, then it's been properly moved by Burgoyne, seconded by Rhodes to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to new business item 14-11. This is an application for community event, the 5K, the fifth corner 5K run. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of an application for community event use of public ways from Derek Stern on behalf of the fifth corner for a 5K run. To acknowledge the receipt of the December 19th, 2013 memo from Police Chief Rennick and the December 20th, 2013 memo from Public Works Director Fordyce, and to approve or not to approve the Winterfest 5K run to be held on January 25th, 2014, beginning at 11.30 a.m., utilizing city streets as a designated on their map, subject to the following conditions. One, that the traffic engineer issued the required temporary traffic control orders. Two, that the fifth corner, Saline Teen Center, provide liability insurance with the City of Saline as an endorsed additional insured party for this event on file. And that all costs for this 5K event for police and DPW service over and above the normal operating costs estimated at $896 be waived or paid by the applicant. Is there a motion? Move to approve and waive. Okay, it's been moved by Burgoyne to approve and waive. Is there a second? second. Council Member Seibo. Okay. Mr. Stearns, do you care to uh, make a comment, sir? Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you. Uh, my name is Derek Stern. I'm with the Fifth Corner. I'm the current Vice President of the Fifth Corner. And just wanted to briefly let you know we would like to run this 5K event in the Saline area, um, really starting out here in front of City Hall and ending at, ending at Henny Field. 
Um, the purpose of choosing January 25th is to really coincide with the snowman building competition that takes place annually, snow permitting at, um, at Henny Field, which I don't think there'll be a problem with that this year. Um, so we are trying to coincide our start time with that event as well. They plan to begin that at one o'clock. We will start around 12 o'clock with the hope of finishing at Henny Field to bring more people downtown to that event and also um, contribute to the su success of that event as well as our 5K for the, for the fifth corner. So we're trying to benefit two entities at the same time. Very good. Thank you, Derek. Are there any questions? Mr. Gearbaugh. This may be more for um, just my understanding. I thought Winterfest was kind of officially canceled. So who's sponsoring the whole event and how are we playing into that? Because I know last year that was a concern. Well, uh, the, the snowman, if you recall, the, the memo um, before prior to Christmas, um, one of the meetings uh, that the was canceled for the uh, well, this year for lack of volunteers, but I believe uh, it's on discussion item. And uh, I believe uh, Bob Rosenberger from Slee Main Street is going to talk more about that, or uh, certainly, Mayor, if you wanted him to be part of that. Yeah, B Bob, do you, you want to come up and make a comment now? And of course, we can have a more. Uh, Derek, you can you can stay up at the podium in case there are additional questions. Um, we may <coughs> engage you later on as uh, in the discussion portion of our agenda in a more protracted dialogue about the snowman building contest. But do you want to talk a little bit about Winterfest or what was Winterfest? And <laughs> yes, rest in peace. It's um, uh, Winterfest uh, for the past three years has been had a declining uh, participation. Um, it's such a weather dependent event and, and we haven't had cooperative weather the last three years. This year, it may be too cold to have a Winterfest, but, but we've had a declining participation, not as many people coming. So uh, when you couple that with the reality that we didn't have as many volunteers this year, uh, we don't have anyone to run the, the, the um, kids games program like we did last year. The uh, ice skaters weren't able to put on their exhibition. Um, it, it just wasn't going to be a stellar and excellent event. And Celine Main Street and the city of Celine always puts on great events. To put on an event that's less than stellar just didn't seem to make a lot of sense. So we are gonna do the, the snowman building championship of the world. And Mr. Stearns is gonna put on a great race. And, uh, and we will look at uh, what we can do to make this a great event in 2015. Yeah, I was just worried because I want to make sure there's a connection with the city and overall downtown because this is significant cost associated with one small run. And the justification I had for last year was it was part of a larger event that was basically encompassing the entire city, which is really one of the reasons why I don't have a concern with even cost at that point. This is where it's starting to tilt a little bit, but knowing that the snowman contest is going to be happening, that's a helpful event. Thank well, and, and as Mr. Uh, it's a valid, very valid point, Mr. Gearbaugh, and as Mr. Rosenberger uh, articulated this evening and as he has in the past, I think it is Celine Main Street's goal and certainly the city of Celine's goal to resurrect and enhance Winterfest in 2015 and make it an ongoing event, a successful event in perpetuity. Mr. Burgoyne? Um, something that benefits the fifth corner benefits our community as a whole. So I, I'm wondering, in, in the past runs, what type of uh, benefit has Fifth Corner received? Um, the Fifth Corner has benefited directly from the runs in the first year that we that I did this and um, stepped away from it in the second and third year. And, and last year, I think was the third year I was involved in this run and it was um, under Celine Middle School Cross Country. The first year we had about 120 participants that participated in the race. I don't remember the direct benefit that went to the fifth corner in that year. I, I wasn't as heavily involved as I am this year um, in the planning of that one. I, I just helped with some, some general guidance. But there was some significant benefit to the fifth corner. Um, and that continues to be true with, with what we plan to do with the event this year as well. Continue to have a significant benefit for the fifth corner. Thank you. Yeah. Additional questions? Mr. Ra? Do you have any anticipated revenue that you're going to gain from this? Um, we We'll be looking at approximately $15 a runner, um, and if we hold true with what we've had in the past, around 75 runners, 75 to 100 runners. I'm hoping with the additional runners that we've had, or with the additional, with the change in time, um, we've traditionally had it at 8 o'clock to accommodate the opening ceremonies for Winterfest with us now moving it to 12 o'clock. On a colder day, we may get some more people, um, so I'm hoping that the revenue will be up a little bit. but. 
no guarantees um, dependent. It's obviously weather dependent and runner dependent. Do you have anything further, Mr. Roth? I would just, I, I think we had some discussions in the past year about many runs and this type of stuff where we waived the fees. And I thought we were going to discuss this issue sometime at a work session. It, the year has gone through, that hasn't happened. I still would like to have some of these issues discussed because it seems to be a, a, a quite an expense that we underwrite all the time. And I'm not sure how it really fits in with our budget. Last year I questioned it because it was for the middle school looking at a particular coach and we didn't get the, the exact connections. Okay. So I say I'm still complex about the whole issue. Let, okay, I, I appreciate that. Let's, um, let's stay on this motion for just a moment if we can, and then once we have consensus and voted on this motion, I'll ask Mr. Roth if there is a agreement with your position that this issue or the larger issue of the waiving of, of fees for community events be analyzed in a work session, if that suffices, sir. I definitely like to have it okay. analyzed. Okay. Mr. Rhodes, did you have a comment? I, I did. I'd like to speak in support of the uh, this fifth K, um, fifth corner 5K run. I think it's a great collaboration between Celine's Teen Center and Celine Main Street, and um, I would anticipate that the um, net revenues from this event would probably fund the Teen Center for a month's worth of operation. And uh, as Councilmember Burgoyne mentioned, what benefits the, the teen center benefits the entire community. Um, I also uh, understand Councilmember Ross' uh, concerns, but I believe that um, spending these kinds of funds in support of community events is one of the things that makes Celine the great community that it is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Burgoyne. Yeah, um, also, I, I myself have a distinction between organizations that are directly in town and org organizations that come from out of town, town. And I agree with Mr. Roth that we should talk about it sometime. Okay. Any additional comments related to this motion? No? Okay. Then it's been properly moved by Burgoyne, seconded by Cybo to approve and to waive. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Eyes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. To Before we move on to new business item 14-12, Mr. Roth had indicated that he would like to have a work meeting sometime in the not-too-distant future to discuss the, um, the waiving of fees for community <coughs> events, uh, our overall strategy relating to that issue and uh, its impact on the budget. Mr. Burgoyne agreed with that. Uh, Mr. Gearbaugh? Yes, <coughs> my concern is being that we need to be very careful on how we handle individual organizations and support. As long as it's a larger community event, there may be tax implications and IRS issues with regards of us, or even violations of state law with us supporting individual organizations that are not necessarily benefiting the taxpayers. So I agree. Okay, Mr. Rhodes? I believe it would be appropriate to have a work meeting to uh, establish a uniform policy. Okay. Ms. Tahar? Yes, I agree. Ms. Seibel? I agree. Okay. Very good. Well, I will work with the, um, the clerk's office and with our city manager to, uh, to schedule that in the, uh, the not-too-distant future. Um, most likely it's not obviously going to be in January, but hopefully we can find some time to do it in February or March. Okay. We now move on to new business item 14-12. This is the application to purchase MERS credit service. This will be a motion to acknowledge the December 19th, 2013 memo from City Manager Campbell and the December 18th, 2013 memo from Joyce Witt and to approve or not to approve the request of Joyce Witt to purchase an additional uh, credited services as outlined in her application for additional credit services with the calculation date of 12113 at a cost to the employee of $36,849 and that the city council has read, understands and approves the governing body resolution at the bottom of Ms. Witt's application for additional credit service. Is there a motion? So move. <coughs> to approve Mr. Approve. Roth? Okay. Yes. Is approve. there a second? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Mr. Campbell, do you care to comment on, on your memo? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is similar to the ones we've uh, received in the past from employees uh, as being members of MERS. Um, this is to purchase uh, Ms. Witt, uh, the assistant, our assistant assessor, um, is uh, requesting to purchase three years 
um, which would increase her, her monthly pension um, uh, payments that she would receive uh, upon retirement. Um, so the, and just like with always, uh, they, they do an actuarial analysis uh, to determine um, th that cost, which is the $36,849. However, if, if they were to, if she were to, uh, for instance, outlive that expected uh, time frame, <clears throat> excuse me, in the analysis that um, the city would potentially be uh, responsible for that, that additional dollars. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Are there any questions? Mr. Rhodes? Since um, we're responsible for any overages, what happens if there's an underage? Do we get a credit back from MERS? I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> I, I, this is no reflection at all on, on Ms. Witt, but I, I really don't like this process that lets people purchase years of service towards retirement benefit. I, I think it's unfair to the city, but that's the system that's out there, and so they can do it. Why not? Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Are there additional comments? Mr. Gearbaugh? Um, and part of my concern is understanding what our true liability will be in the event of something like this going on. And I don't think we've looked at this well enough. We've done these kind of automatically, but we really have got to start looking at these, especially now. I know that part of the thing is not the eligibility for insurance benefits, one part of it. But um, yeah, I would kind of like to know what we've done in the last few years, if council would. but. What we've done in these in terms of what would be our potential liability going forward as a result of approving these should we have this issue where the person outlives whatever the benefit was so thank you mr gearball additional comments um to the, the the points that were made by by both of my colleagues um mr rhodes is 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 spot on um this process is um somewhat distasteful, but it, it is the process that exists and employees take advantage of it, and, and rightfully so. Um, and it's not as if they are taking advantage of it. There's a, there's a cost that, and, and a burden that they have to assume, but there's also a liability that the, the city is forced to, to deal with when these are approved. Um, to Mr. Gearbaugh's point, um, I do think there's merit in having a more thorough discussion on the impact of, of approving um, employees uh, purchasing additional years um, and I'm not sure I think it's necessary to have an additional work meeting on that I think there's probably a way to incorporate that into our budget process so Mr. Gearbon if the rest of council would be amenable I'm happy to add that as, as an item when we uh, when we discuss this this next year's budget does that suffice yeah okay. just we have a good idea of it okay. I'd ask the clerk and city manager to make note of that too um, that's basically all I have. Is there, are there additional comments from council? No? Okay. Then it's been properly moved by Roth, seconded by Tahar to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. <coughs> Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to discussion now. Uh, discussion items, commission, committee, or task force reports from council. It's the beginning of the year, so I didn't assume there would be any. Let me just make one quick comment. Um, as you will all, well, as you have already noted, um, the council appointments that I made for 2014 are very similar to those that were made in 2013, and that's keeping with a, a promise I made at the end of 2012, which is that I believe consistency and continuity, especially as it relates to council representation on our boards and commissions, um, is very important. And I actually think um, in 2013, um, we were able to place um, council members on the boards and commissions where they could really shine and where their talents would be showcased. And so I think you all did an excellent job, and I encourage you to keep up uh, the good work. The one thing I would note as it relates to commission and committee um, appointments from council, if you compare this document with the document you received at the beginning of 2013, there are two additions. Um, in the past, we always had a citizen appointee as our liaison to the Raisin River Watershed Council. Um, many communities have a, a, a citizen as their liaison, but probably far more have a member of the legislative body. Um, and so when Ms. Laronis resigned that position after many years of exceptional service, um, I thought it was prudent to appoint Mr. Rhodes to that position since he serves on the Environmental Commission and there's a lot of, well, that, that just makes logical sense that the person who's our representative on the Environmental Commission would also be the liaison to uh, to the Raisin River Watershed Council. In addition, and this had been an omission that I think occurred in 2012 and 2013 that shouldn't have. If you recall in 2011, we approved, um, the city council approved the community's participation in the urban county program. 
um, in which there's a, a, a pot of money that is allocated to the participating municipalities that can then be spent in the community when there are individuals in need. Um, and Mayor Driscoll had served in that capacity in the past. Um, my schedule does not permit me to participate on the executive board, so I had designated uh, Mayor Pro Tem Linda Tahar to, to Mayor Linda Mayor Pro Tem Linda Tahar to be the liaison for the second half of 2013. And obviously, as as you all know. Uh, and approved, she will be continuing in that role for 2014. So I just wanted to make you aware of those changes and modifications. Um, and also to note that we still have a, a number of vacancies on the Arts and Culture Committee, and now one since Friday on the Parks Commission. So if you have uh, ideas of, of individuals who would, uh, who would be good on those, those two groups, I encourage you to uh, direct them to the website so they can fill out an application and turn it into our clerk's office. Okay? Anything else as it relates to commission, committee, or task force reports? Ms. Tahar. Um, I would just note, related to the Arts and Culture Committee, um, that the remaining members of the committee voted at our December meeting to change the meeting date and time, which was um, a problem for us in, in allowing members to, um, to attend. So um, the new meeting date and day and time is Monday at the first Monday of the month at noon. Okay. So it's a daytime meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Duly noted. Mayor? Yes. That reminds me, just real quick, um, planning commission meetings are going to be at 7 o'clock now, too. Yes. They're moving up a half hour. Yeah. Appreciate you, you sharing that. Park commission is also changing to 7? Okay. I actually believe ZBA has always been at 7, so it looks like we've got a trend, a, a movement towards 7 as opposed to 7.30. Okay. Um, are there other reports and announcements? Mr. Rhodes. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to mention that um, uh, Clerk uh, Royal and I had an opportunity to go up to the city of Ann Arbor a couple weeks ago and, and talk with their uh, city clerk and um, another representative about their use of Granicus, which is a software program that had been mentioned here um, as a possibility as we continue to look forward towards getting more citizen involvement and trans even, even better transparency in what we do. Um, the, uh, one of the suggestions that came out of that uh, meeting from the uh, city of Ann Arbor clerk was that they thought there might be someone better than Granicus out there at this point in time. And um, I know that we have some monies budgeted to potentially bring some software on, but I wanted to make sure that um, we spent enough time and effort to make sure we had the right one and not just the first one that happened to, to be mentioned. Um, and I don't know um, what all that would involve for city staff, but um, it, you know, it's an, a very important piece of software to bring in, and we need to make sure we get the right one. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Any other reports or announcements? I have one, and I'm looking for council consensus on this, and I, I, you know, I should preface by saying I can assume what the consensus will be, but I'm obligated to, to make the announcement nevertheless. Um, I have met with um, several active veterans in this community, um, names that, uh, that you'll all be familiar with, uh, Bob Krasinski, Tim Driscoll, um, George Perrault, Pete Belair, uh, some of the leaders of the So Proudly We Hail initiative that um, well, eventually transpired it with a, a beautiful new flagpole um, and light in, uh, in Oakwood Cemetery. These gentlemen and I met at the end of December and um, would like to do something in the community very similar to what Milan did um, several years ago. If you go down to Myland, um, adjacent to one of their city parks next to their municipal building, which also includes the library and senior center, they have an absolutely gorgeous, it's, it's quite remarkable, veterans display, um, which includes um, the Veterans Cross, which is um, cast in bronze and it's, it's boots, it's an M16 rifle and then a helmet, a very nice plaque, a raised shrub bed, and then what was a, a very large expense was something very similar on a much smaller scale, of course, to uh, what you would find in Washington, D.C. if you visited the Vietnam Vets Memorial, which is a wall inscribed with the name of just about every individual in the Milan community, I believe going back to the 19th century, who served in some branch of the American Armed Forces. Um, and it's a great reflection of that community's respect and appreciation to those who wore the uh, uniform and, and served in 
either peacetime or in, in a time of war. Um, and we would like to do something smaller on, uh, uh, but, but no less profound in the Saline community. And so that group is in the process of um, formalizing themselves and, and uh, turning themselves into a 501c3 for the purpose of soliciting donations. Um, they would like to make a presentation to council in the next couple months. Um, and the parcel that we're looking at right now, although I think we need to meet with city staff, in particular DPW director, four days to discuss logistics, is this vacant lot between city hall and the fire hall. And what we would like to do, um, at least initially, is um, a raised shrub bed with the veterans cross and some sort of plaque. Um, we feel like it's a nice secure location, being that it's between the police department and the fire hall, but it's also something that's very visible. So in addition to, to being a reflection of this community's commitment to our veterans, it's also, um, in a technical sense, a, a, another public display of, of, of art that can be treasured and valued by generations to come. So with your permission, unless there are objections, I will let that group know that they have council's encouragement, at least at this preliminary stage, and that we look forward to uh, a more in-depth um, presentation in the coming months. I support that. Okay. I'm yes. fine. I'm fine with the veteran memorial or whatever, but be be aware of the constitutionality of whatever we place there. Sure. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Support. Okay. Support. Okay. Yes, support. Good. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, well, I will let those gentlemen know, and we'll try and schedule them to to come in uh, sometime in the not too distant future. If there are no uh, additional reports or announcements. Um, Last up, but certainly not least, Bob, do you want to, I don't know if we have anything more to share about the snowman building contest, just that it is going to happen, weather permitting. Uh, okay. How would, uh, is there something on the Celine Main Street's website if people wanted to learn more? Um, there will be. There will be, okay. So, so date, time, location? 25th, uh, any yield? Can you confirm that with us so we can announce that we have our next meeting a week from Monday? That's what's on. It is one o'clock. Yeah, okay. yeah, one to three p.m. Sound about right? Yeah. Okay. If that, if that's not, yeah, okay. We'd appreciate that. Okay. So snowman building contest the twenty fifth, Henny Field, one to three. Weather permitting, I hope to see you all there. Okay. You'll get a workout. That's for sure. <laughs> Mr. Rhodes. There's one minor correction that needs to be made to that uh, discussion memo on the snowman building, and it has the wrong time for the start of the 5K race. It says start at 9 a.m. Oh. instead of noon. So I just want to make sure that we don't get any inaccurate information out there. Did you note that, Bob? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Okay. Anything further on the snowman building contest? No? Okay. Then we move on to public comments. Under the Open Meetings Act, any citizen may come forward at this time and make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. Are there any citizen comments? Please. I just want to know what this oh. task... Oh, you come up with the microphone there, Matthew. <laughs> the task force, I'm greatly to hear that someone's finally picking up the task force. Because where I live at, there's many, many problems. And Brian knows this for the truth. I go through there at nighttime, daytime, and you would not believe what park it is. It's Brecken Park. Things going on when kids are playing baseball, and it's just terrible. Parents do not even want to take out-of-town baseball teams do not want to even come to that park. And it's a home field for the 10U and uh, nine new kids. So I'm willing to serve on that uh, task force because it's just ridiculous for what you see going on at nighttime and the people over there are just complaining left and right. Thank you, Matt. I'll make sure to share this memo with you so you can see what the, the uh, task force is charged with. Okay. Thank you. Are there are additional public comments? No? Is there any other business to come before Saline City Council this evening? Mr. Gearbaugh. I just want to, um, I've gotten a lot of great compliments and um, I guess recognition for our DPW and all the work they've done on roads this week and I think we as a council want to just give them the, the gratitude that we've seen and 
heard a lot of about what they've been doing and I just need to recommend that because it has been really beneficial for us that a lot of people have just recommended that we are a city that knows what we're doing. Absolutely. I appreciate you bringing that up. I received a number of emails from citizens complimenting uh, our DPW um, folks for the extraordinary work they did this, these past 48 hours. Um, they worked a lot of long, hard hours, and it is greatly appreciated by, by this entire council and, I think, by the entire city. The one thing that I, I want to note, um, and many of you are aware that late Saturday afternoon, um, early evening, the city did issue a statement encouraging people to move their cars off the street. We did not declare, declare a snow emergency. We just issued an advisory opinion encouraging people to move their cars off the street. Makes it a lot easier for our DPW crowd crews, excuse me, to plow and salt. Regardless of whether those statements are issued in the past, if people know that there is a large snowstorm coming, please be conscientious and please do your best to move your cars off the street. It really does help and, and conversely when you leave your cars on the street it really does hinder the effectiveness of our DPW crew. So I just want to make that very clear but again to Mr. Gearbaugh's point our uh, our DPW men do an uh, outstanding job, and we greatly appreciate their contributions these past few days. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? No, then we have our next meeting um, a week from today, a work meeting beginning at 6 p.m., a regular meeting at 7.30, and then a regular meeting on February the 3rd at 7.30. Was there additional comments? Would you remind me what that work meeting is for? Um, we may not need it now. I think CIP, the Kevin. Oh, okay. okay. Will we be able to confirm that before Thursday? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll be able to confirm with you by before Thursday whether we need that work meeting or not. There are no absences this evening, so we will dispense with that. At this time, I would seek a motion to adjourn this regular city council meeting at 9.06 p.m. So motion. moved. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Burgoyne. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned.